This is Sherry at djsundry.blogspot.com and today I have a quick, I hope, and easy project to do. I'm going to be altering my ATC library drawer. Now I've already done a little bit of prep work um, just in choosing the materials I'm going to use and um, then I've done cut cut a little bit of piece a uh, little bit of paper and some things. Now um I, you recently saw this on a haul and I told you I was going to alter it. When you purchase this, the, the picture that they show is a beautiful, um, almost a Christmassy um, looking thing that they did there. And I really didn't want to do Christmas because I want to use this year round. So instead I decided to choose my favorite things and use um, purples. So let's get started on this. Um, the first thing I did is I went back to my scrap stash. Why my scrap stash, you might ask? Because I knew in my scrap stash I had some leftover papers from previous projects. Oh, an old journal a long time ago. Some previous projects that I did. Um, it, this is paper from the Can Company, and I cannot remember the collection. But it was beautiful um, blues and, or, I mean, purples and greens. Um, uh, there's some almost like a damask um, one there the backside I'm actually using the backside for the front of it um, and there's some pretty little birds there were some um, birds nests or some some of the embellishments you could get with the kit were um, little miniature eggs in the purples and I think you could even get birds and I think there were even some stick pins maybe I'll check and see if I still have some of those but anyway so I decided um, I have used that collection and used that collection and I'm down to just scraps as far as I know I might have a little bit more buried but for the most part I just have scraps so I went to my scrap stash and this is a perfect project for that now I decided that all I'm going to do to finish this is on the inside I'm going to finish the fronts of each of these dividers here that you see just with simple pieces of paper it'll be smooth um, I'm not at this point going to go back and do Mod Podge or anything though you could I think for now because this is like a the inside is like a balsa wood that's been varnished and so it's really rough and I really think that ATG is going to be strong enough to stick and so um, I'm going to put different ones. Now, this is double-sided paper, and so I want to alternate dark and light. So I've cut these at, um, I wrote it down now, I can't remember. I've cut these at different, at, um, I think it was one and three quarter inches tall by three and three quarter inches, um, I mean two and three quarter inches wide and that's pretty much the perfect fit now for the front I've cut this one and I thought maybe that this knob here would unscrew and it does not it's glued on and of course I could maybe pry it loose and then re-glue it when I was all done but what I did is I measured the size that I needed I wanted just a little bit of the wood to show around the edge almost like you would leave a border around a card and so I decided the best size for me was to cut this at three and a quarter inches wide this way and one and five eighths inches tall and that's about where I wanted it. But then I had to figure out what was I going to do to get that around my knob. So I kind of played with it a little bit and I pulled some um, my scissors out and I cut an X and I still ended up um, ripping the paper. So then I decided what I needed to do was pull out my hole punch. So I pulled my Tim Holtz um, ruler because it's so easy to use this to find the center point so I found my center point which is right here I marked it with an X and I am going to line up my X in the middle of my punch here and try to do it as close to the middle because of course if it's not in the middle it will settle um, in the wrong place on the box and you'll have uneven paper and it's still just a tiny bit too um, small but I can kind of force it on there without making it really um, break and and for this one I was really thinking initially that I was going to use some glossy accents but I think again I think I'm not going to use my um, 
my ATG, I think I'm going to use this um, red line tape that's a little bit stronger. So let's go ahead and get started on this. So let's just cut some strips. This is kind of a change my mind in the middle. Um, I'm actually going to turn off the video and when I come back all of these strips will be all attached. Okay, so I'm back and I have everything adhered inside. I don't know how, what the best angle is to show that to you on camera, but I have to tell you that red line tape is fabulous. In fact, the biggest thing I would have to say is be very careful because it adhered to this so well that this I got a little bit crooked and I couldn't pull it up without tearing it up. So that worked just fine. Now, if I really was concerned about sealing off the edge, I could go around it with Mod Podge. I'm not concerned about that, but these just adhered beautifully to the inside of my box. So I've got my individual sheets to the inside. I've got my music note kind of with this purple undertone coming through. And now we're gonna finish off by decorating the front. And I'm not going to do it, um, it's going to be a fairly simple, way to decorate it's going to um, not it, it won't take me very long to do but um, it will be pretty full by the time I'm done so I went back to my flower stash and I haven't pulled these out in quite a while but if you remember I've had these for a while these roses that I got in a Prima pack at the scrapbooking expo um, last March and I um, pulled some roses um, and I pulled one of these cream colored and then from this Prima pack that had all of the purple, I'm getting low on these, can you tell? I'm gonna really miss them. I pulled two, one each of each of the lighter colors. I really like the dark one better, but for, um, I didn't need all three. There's really not room on the box for all three. And to match my ribbon, um, the lighter colors actually looked better. Um, so here I've already pulled, I've cut my stems off with my um, tonic scissors. And then I had this trinket, and this is also from Prima. And it was also part of that big pack that I got that had the roses, the, these big creamy roses in it. And um, actually this was to make the packet that I bought on a real, I can't even remember, it was really a good deal. Um, but it was actually to make a mini album. And I've used um, the flowers on other things. Now I'm getting ready to open up one of the packets of trinkets. But the trinket that was in there is this cute little charm. And it actually, like a necklace charm, opens up. You could put pictures in there. And if I had pictures of my husband and my kids that were that small, I would put them in there. And I may eventually um, make some. It's got kind of these crystals around the edge, although they're not real. And this um, embossed heart thing on the inside. On the back it says love. Now the jump ring did not come as part of that. I went back to my stash and found the jump ring and I added the jump ring. And then, of course, I have to use some of my favorite ribbon and I pulled the three girl jam witches brew all to coordinate together. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and tie my knot. Now I've kept my witches brew really long because I don't want to waste any of it. So I am going to just tie as cut it off as closely as I can and all I'm doing is I'm tying it around the knob now I want to do that in such a way where my charm is going to kind of be on the side and I may even adhere it but at this point I'm not going to because I I want it kind of free hanging but if I find that as it's sitting on the shelf or whatever it falls and you can't see it I'll probably go ahead and um, free hang it. Now I, I've left a little bit of ribbon there and I'm not really putting much ribbon on this. I'm going to cut the tails relatively short and I'm just cutting them at an angle so they won't fray. And I'm going to put that aside. And there I have my bow around my knob tying my charm. In fact, I think I'm going to pull my bow even a little bit smaller because I want it to show and be pretty, but my rose is so big that I don't want to um, lose all of my paper. Now, I'm not going to trim it or play it with it anymore until I get my roses adhered. So now we're going to adhere the rose and I may actually just kind of wind the ribbon under the rose and through the rose. But I'm going to put my cream colored rose right there. And to do that I'm going to use my glossy accents. 
and I'm going to be fairly generous with it. I thought I had already prepped my glossy accent. Apparently not well enough. This is a bottle that I've had for quite some time and so its tip is getting relatively clogged. I'll just not even put the lid back on that. So I'm going to put that right about here and I'm going to hold that on for a minute because I definitely do not want that coming off. And that's why I chose the glossy accents. I wanted something good and strong. I think my Tombow Mono probably would have done a good job too. I didn't think about using that. But the glossy accents will work beautifully. So there is where I'm putting actually before it gets too. Ooh, it's almost there. I'm going to move it down just a little bit. And adhere that on. Beautiful. Now I'm going to take one of these ribbons. I think I'm going to pull the darker of the two and I'm going to adhere it. And for this one, I'm going to put it right above it, which is why I moved that down. Hold that on for just a minute. Again, we don't want these guys coming off. I don't want so much glossy accent on it that it um, is something that you can see, but I want enough that will stand up to the wear that I'm going to give it. Now I thought about just leaving it. Actually, I even thought about not putting the roses on it at all. Um, and then I decided I wanted them on there. I could put this right there, which would be pretty. Or I could put it right here. No, I think I'm going to put it over here and leave the charm to balance that side. Again, you're seeing my creative process at work here. I'm just going to kind of tuck that up and you see the ribbon kind of coming down around it, which is why I chose the lighter color to go closest to the ribbon because it's a better match than the darker color. Now what little bit of glossy accents I spilled there will actually just dry. So now I'm going to move my bow just a little bit and now that I have it all done, I don't think I want to cut off just nothing. I want to leave it just like that because I want my um, ribbon to kind of balance out the heaviness of the roses on that side. So there we have it. Let me put the lid on my glossy accents before I have a big mess. And there we have the little um, box, my altered box for my ATCs. So when I pull out the ATCs that I saved, I can just put them right inside. And um, then as I get more, as I collect more from um, different people, I'll have a nice place to store them. And I'm hoping to make some more myself over the next few months. My, my goal is to do one a month and make it kind of seasonal. So I'll have all sorts of these and you never know when one might be coming your way. So thanks for watching and have a great day.